How's it going? So I'm Jordan from the Hoop Company, and I want to take a little while to show you guys exactly how we make our LED hoops. You know, so this could be a little ill-advised, but I want to just want to show you guys the amount of effort that goes into every single one of our hoops. So I'm going to show you guys how we make one of our $29.99 LED hoops. And I want to show you that no matter whether or not you buy a $29 hoop or a $100 hoop, the same parts and materials, the same process is goes into every single hoop. And so I'm first going to start off by showing you guys, these are all the tools we use. Almost every single one of these tools will be used to make one single hoop. So, took a couple steps with some stuff ahead of time. So, for example, I already pre built the connectors. I don't really necessarily want to show that on video. A lot of people would love to copy that design. Um, I already pre cut the wire. But a few things I want to explain. Even down to the wire, very, seems very simple, very common, but it makes a big difference. Uh, a lot of other shops, they use speaker wire. The thing with speaker wire, the problem is, is that it's a lot of very tiny strands to make up one wire. And when you use a soldering iron to solder on the LEDs to the wire, it makes the wire very brittle and it breaks and it snaps. And so most of the hoops that break is because of the wire snapping where the LEDs are soldered onto the wire. And so we specifically use single strand thick gauge copper which costs a bit more but it, it never breaks and you can solder LEDs onto it and it won't snap from metal fatigue and so that's one one of the first things we ever did when we started making LED hoops and so next thing I do I've got I'm gonna make a 12 LED this is our fire peach 12 LEDs it's red orange and yellow so we've got all the LEDs here like these are red, yellow, and orange. And the thing is, these are, these are diffused, which means the colors added on the outside of the LED instead of from emitting inside. I like these, I think the voltage is a little better, and if they're easier, you're not going to misplace them. We're not going to switch them up because they're all clear. But, you, know, you can see the colors right here. So the oranges, they're a little bit lower voltage than the other LEDs, so you have to add resistors to them to make sure that they're protected. And so anytime you make LED hoops, all the colors are different voltages, and you have to make sure all the voltages are equal. So I'm going to add resistors to the lower voltage LEDs, that way they're all equal voltage when the battery is turned on. And if you don't do this, what happens is you either have some LEDs that are really bright, some that are really dim, or in, in worst case scenario, you have some LEDs that just blow out and some don't. So you have soldering iron, the solder, even the solder you use makes a big difference. You have to find a really low temperature solder so that way when you solder with it, it really melts and gets into the different connections and makes a really good connection. And that's the one thing you see with a lot is if you use a high high temperature solder, it won't melt very well and becomes kind of, it becomes like clumpy and it doesn't really get in between the, the wraps and it doesn't work very well. You can, and you get LEDs that flicker and they don't want to stay on all the time. So now I'm just clipping the extra wire, not a big deal. It's, Trying to clean it up so I can strand them onto the little LEDs. Be done. I need to bend them into place to make sure that they can be parallel to each other. So as soon as I finish this process, I'm going to start wiring them onto the actual copper wire. So that's done. They're ready to go. So now each one has to be 
individually wrapped onto the wire. So positive, negative, can't get those mixed up. Mix those up, you run the whole hoop. It's just to go and repair the whole thing over. So we're gonna alternate one color at a time. We'll go through each one. Positive, minus, wrap it on, wrap it on. Sometimes the wire gets a little stubborn, you gotta stretch it out a little bit. Especially with the ones with the resistors. You wanna give them some space so they don't end up pressing and shorting out. It usually takes about two minutes to do a 12 LED hoop. A little bit longer if some of them have resistors, but just because you gotta take a little time to make sure they don't get bent wrong and start touching. And usually when I'm doing this, I usually wrap each leg of the LED around the wire twice. And that has a couple of benefits to it. One, it just makes sure it's wrapped on and making a good solid connection with the wire. But in the next step, when you have to solder them on, it gives you a little more room for the solder to really get in between the wires and stick and create a really good bond between the LED and the wire. And that's something you really want to spend some time to make sure that it's done properly because if it's not, like I said before, you start getting flickering LEDs, some may not turn on, and it creates a little bit of a problem. So, almost done, got three more LEDs. Like I said, these are all hand wired, you know, this isn't you know LED tape from China I'm buying, this is Every LED is calibrated, sorted out, and individually stranded onto the wire. It's, it takes a little more time. And I, you could, I could buy some pre-wired LEDs from China, but I think what this does, it gives me a lot more ability to create custom designs, do things, especially when it comes to the 50 LED versions. You can do things with 50 LED hoops when you're hand wiring them that you can never do with prefabricated wires and tapes and I just, you can't do it. Also, I like to be able to calibrate the voltage of each LED myself and make sure that you can do it. And, and with most tape and strands from China, you can't do different voltages on a, a single strand. So by doing it by hand, you really get a lot more options, a lot more ability to do things, which enables us to do a lot of really awesome 50 LED designs. And same with our other colors, it just what you can't do. So now, as you see the wire, you start on the LEDs. There's little legs that have to be clipped off. You need to clip them off so you can solder it. So I'm gonna get, I got some pliers. I'm just gonna snip off all the legs and go through each one. So once these are all clipped, I'm going to get the soldering iron out and I'm going to solder all of these connections. Each one needs to be soldered individually. You have to make sure that the solder gets in between all the wire wraps and makes a really solid connection or it will... You take a second and you do a bad solder job and you get the LED won't make a good connection. It will flicker and it will turn off and you have one bad LED on a hoop. And you got 50 LEDs per hoop in order, that's going to be a return. <laughs> well, it's something so small and simple as that it will cause an entire order to be returned. And you got an upset customer who's going to go on ICC or wherever, and they're going to make a huge fit about it. So just one tiny little detail you miss can cause a huge problem. So got the right solder. You want to use... You want to use 6040 solder. It has lead in it, but it's a lower melting temperature and it works really well. You don't have to worry as much. You can solder really quick with it. As you can see, I'm soldering bam, bam. I'm just going to go through and just make sure all these connections are soldered really well. And you want to watch that the lead as it actually melts and seeps in between and wraps around the wire.
And the good thing about this, it has a lot of acid inside the, the solder. So the acid really helps it bind and cling to the wire. And normally I have fans going and have this place pretty ventilated out, but just to avoid these, I'm not, not going to make a big fuss about it. So as soon as I get done with this, we're going to do a little insulation real quick and do wrap it with some more insulation. And I'll explain that as we get there. Just about done with this. And I would I would probably say this is probably about the ten thousandth LED hoop I've ever made. I've made a lot. <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands. I mean about four or five thousand individual orders on my shop. A lot of those are for multiple hoops. I've done a lot of hoops just for individual reasons. I've done bulk orders for festivals, for wholesale. Now, so they're now soldered. So now what we gotta do is you have to make sure in between each solder job, use two wires. They touch, even when the hoop is done, the whole hoop will turn off and will glitch. So you have to make sure that they're insulated. Something simple, hot glue down. Put a little dab of hot glue between LEDs. This does, it prevents them from ever bending and touching each other. So you gotta go through every single one, add a little hot glue in between them. This gives a little insulation to make sure the negative and the positive ends do not ever touch. And it may look okay right now, but once you start hooping with it, they can get knocked around, banging a little bit, and they can end up touching. And if just one of these touches, positive or negative, the whole hoop will turn off and it will short out. And once again, that's a return order. <laughs> it has to be sent in for repair. And once again, we get a lot of flack, but you know, there's a reason I do free repairs in all of my hoops. Is I want to, if something's going wrong with the hoops I make, I specifically want to see exactly what is going wrong with them. And so if I'm doing something wrong, if there's a flaw in the design I have, I offer free repairs. So if something's going wrong, people are going to email me and they're going to say, hey, my hoop's broken, I need to send it in for a repair. And they will. But what that does allows me to see what is happening, what is going wrong with them. And I can specifically target that one thing and correct it. And over time, you keep getting these flaws and you repair them, you get to the point where you have a design that's pretty much perfect. When you stop seeing broken hoops and people stop contacting you with repairs, your hoop is pretty good. 